Hi, it's Jeff Challen. So at this point we have Android Studio installed I'm using version 3.1. What I'm going to do here is walk you through the project of starting a new project in Android Studio, walk you through the process of starting a new Android Studio project. That's also going to give us a chance to install some tools that we're going to need and experiment with what's called the Android emulator. So from the splash screen for Android Studio, I click Start a New Android Studio Project. Um, I'm just going to call this Hello World. I don't think I need to set a company domain. Um, and the project location is going to put it in my home directory. That's fine. Um, oh, I guess it does. It, I do need a package name. So let's call it, I think it's called CS, let's call it actually cs125.cs.illinois.edu. Okay, great. So I'm going to hit next. Um, here, there's a variety of different options. What we're going to work on for this course are Android smartphone applications. But as you can see, there's actually a pretty rich ecosystem of Android devices, including Android TVs, uh, Android Wear, that's the, the watch and other things. Um, I've never heard of Android Auto. That's very interesting. Um, and then something called Android Things. And I think that's sort of embedded uh, devices. Um, we're going to use phone and tablet, so that's the default. And I would also just leave this as it is. So what this determines is the devices that our app is going to be compatible with. As Android evolves, they add new features. And devices before those features came out don't necessarily have all these features. So by choosing a particular API level, this means that we're sort of selecting what devices our app's going to be able to run on. If we choose earlier levels, it means our app runs on more devices. If we choose later levels, it means our app has access to more features. So the default of API level 15 is fine, and you can see that this allows us to run on approximately 100% of devices. If I set this much higher, like Android 28, which is a new version of Android that hasn't even been released yet, now I can see my app only runs on less than 1% of devices. So let's use Ice Cream Sandwich, great. API level 15. For this tutorial, let's just create a very simple app. We have some different choices here in terms of the initial activity. That's sort of like a screen uh, part of the app that we can add. Uh, for this screencast, let's just add an empty activity. Um, this, the uh, defaults here are completely fine as far as the activity and layout names. and. Now there's a couple of extra things we're going to have to do. So we're going to hit finish. And that's going to download some more stuff um, and eventually launch us into a development environment that's going to look pretty familiar to us because Android Studio is based on IntelliJ, which is the same um, integrated development environment that you've been using throughout the semester. All right. so. Um, like the rest of our MPs, Android uses Gradle to manage its dependencies and build your application. And what Gradle's doing now is it's grabbing a bunch of things that it needs. Um, this is going to take a few minutes. Once you actually get to the point where you can edit this simple application, there's going to be a few other things that we're also going to need to get Gradle to retrieve um, in a separate step. So again, this process is a little bit more elongated than it might need to be. And it's a couple of places where you just have to look at an error message and do, do the thing that the error message is asking you to do. All right, so once we get all of these, I'm sure extremely useful pieces of software, we're going to be ready to start um, developing our very, very simple Hello World application. And our goal here is to get it to the point where we can actually run it on the Android emulator. Android doesn't assume when you're doing development that you have access to an Android device or that you have an access to all the different types of Android devices that you might want to run your application on. And so to support different devices, uh, it provides an emulator. And that's what we're going to get to the point where we can use. OK, so um, this probably looks a little bit familiar to you. Um, I have a package statement, which is new, and we'll discuss that when we talk about our next MP. I have a couple of imports, which are things I've done in the past. And then I have a class. This is um, 
you know, something that's sort of equivalent to the main method that you've been using. But this class um, extends another class that's provided by Android. And all this does is override a single method, which is run when your app is created. Okay, so now at this point, what I'm gonna, uh, now it's still indexing my, um, my new application. You can see that the layout of the app is pretty similar, except for the fact that uh, now we find things in this subdirectory of source main Java. So rather than being put, um, you know, the, the package name is being used as one of the subdirectories. So this is, a, this is somewhat new, but this should look fairly familiar to you since we've been using IntelliJ throughout the semester. Okay, so once this is done indexing, that takes a minute, I should be able to run my app. Okay, so I have this familiar run dialog over here. I'm gonna hit run. Now at this point, what Android Studio is trying to do is find a device to run your application on. But I don't have a device hooked up. I do have an Android device, but I'm not gonna use that. Instead, what I'm gonna do is create a new virtual device. Now here the settings are pretty important, so please follow along carefully. We're going to choose a device of type phone, and we're gonna to choose to emulate a Nexus 5X device. And it shows you some information. There's lots of choices here about different devices that you could emulate, but this is the one that we're going to use for the class. And it's very important that you use this one because this is the only one that we're gonna support actively. Okay. Now, the next step is to choose a platform system image level. And what we suggest you use is Android 7 or Nougat. Um, so these are different releases of Android. This is a, a pre-release. This is a version of Android that hasn't even come out yet. Uh, Oreo is Android 8.0. Android uses a naming convention that um, is based on both a version number and then also a uh, dessert, which is a little bit silly, um, if you ask me. So. We're gonna choose Nougat and we're gonna download this particular image. So we have something else to download. We have to accept another license agreement. Um, this is something that's not going to be a particularly fast process, but what this is retrieving are files required to completely emulate um, on your computer an Android device. And this is a pretty cool thing to be able to do because it means that we can build our application and we can experiment with it without having to actually install or have access to an Android device. Now it's possible that some point throughout the rest of this process, you are going to get stuck and not be able to figure out what to do and things aren't gonna work um, the way that they're gonna work on my machine. And what we encourage you to do is ask the course staff for help. Um, it is really important for the next couple of MPs that you try to get this to work. Uh, we do have some workarounds if necessary, if you really are stuck. But Google has gone to a lot of effort to make the Android development process as user-friendly as possible and to make it work well on a, a wide variety of different devices. So we expect that the laptops that you have been using to develop for this class are more than capable of developing for Android as well. Okay, as in the past, I'm gonna pause the screencast and I'll return when uh, this download is done. Okay, so at this point, I've the, finished the installation of um, the software needed to run the virtual devices, and I'm actually going to configure one. So I've got my application sort of set up here, um, and I'm going to try to run it. And when I try to run it, what it's going to show me is that I need to create a new virtual device. Android allows me to use an emulator to run my programs on devices that I may not own in order to test them um, on devices that I don't have access to. This can also be a faster way to, um, to iterate on your programs without actually having to install them onto your device every time. Okay, so these settings are pretty important, so let's go through them carefully. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose a device. So this actually is gonna emulate a real piece of hardware. In this case, the device that we want you to use is the Nexus 5X, and this is important. This is the device that we're gonna support in office hours and the one that we're gonna expect you to use in the MPs. Okay, so 
Um, I've already downloaded the NuGet image here, uh, but we want you to use the Android 7.0 image. Normally when you get to the screen for the first time, there's a download link, you click download, there's some you know, screens to get through, um, and then you have access to those. So at this point I have that image and I'm gonna use it to create a new device. Here I can name the device if I want to, I don't have to, um, and it asks me when it starts up, what orientation should it be in. Um, one thing that you probably do want to change in the advanced settings menu is set up the cameras on the device to use the webcam on your computer if it has one. Um, this allows you to take photos using the webcam that's attached to your computer. So you can actually um, have photos sent into the virtual device as if it had a real camera. Okay, so I'm gonna hit finish. And now I have a virtual device that I can run my application on. So I'm gonna hit okay. And it's okay, this error is normal. And now what you can see is that I have this emulator here, um, which is booting up an actual um, copy of Android. And usually I can move this around. I'm not sure why I can't drag and drop it right now. Oop, that didn't work. Yeah, that's not what I wanted. Where did you go? Here we are. Well, this is, I've done quite a few things here that I didn't want to do. Let me try minimizing this so that I can grab this guy and pull him around a little bit. Okay, so now what you can see is that despite the fact that I cannot for the life of me actually move this thing. Um, this is the AMOLED emulator when it, when it boots up. And you can see it's, it's pretty neat. I mean, it's got a lot of the things that I would expect. Um, I'm gonna just try quitting this and seeing if I can restart it. And if I restart it, if it'll actually let me drag it into a different spot. Let's try running this again. I'm gonna choose the things. This time it's going to boot up. There we go. This time it's going to boot up a lot faster. Um, and when I, let's see here, what's going on? Okay. So you can see that my activity exists here in the menu. So here's my app. It's called Hello World. I can launch it from the launcher, just like I would launch a typical Android application. And you can mess around with the Android emulator a little bit, and you'll see that it works you know, very much like a normal phone. Um, not completely, obviously. There are some things that are different. I'm going to launch Chrome just to give you a sense of the fact that the actual um, web, the web works. So I'll Google CS125. Um, I don't know what this other logo is. Jeez, what's that from? So... And, and I can, you know, I can interact with this phone very much as if it were an actual device. I can cause it to rotate. You can see the Chrome response to that by rotating the screen. Um, these buttons down here correspond to hitting the actual physical button on the phone. I can do that either by clicking here or by clicking these. So this brings up my recents menu. I can see my application here. All right, so if you get this far, the next step is to play with uh, this application a little bit. So for example, see if you can figure out how to change the text that's displayed. And there's a couple of other suggestions of modifications that you can make on the, um, on the lab write-up. So have some fun with this. Um, if you get stuck, talk to a course staff member. But it's pretty important that, if possible, you get the Android emulator running on your system because this is something that you're going to need for MP6, MP7, and for the final project.